Hello guys and welcome to Colliding at Home. Today, I'd like to be talking to you about insect mouths. So you're probably wondering how insects eat. Well, they don't really have mouths like yours. They have mouths that are kind of uniquely shaped. So today, I'm going to show you how to experiment with different insect mouths. First, we're going to talk about chewing insects. Now when you think about chewing, you probably think they have teeth like ours. Unfortunately, they don't. They have what we call mandibles. So we are using tongs to demonstrate how masticating or chewing insects would eat. These include dragonflies or beetles or things similar to that. Remember that moths and butterflies in their larvae state or caterpillars would use mandibles as well, although they will later have proboscises, which we'll talk about in a second. So to think about mandibles, so chewing insects, what we have is a couple little insect bugs and we're gonna take our tongs and we're gonna chew them on up. We're gonna crunch and crunch and we're gonna pick them up and chew. It's really that simple. That's why they're called chewing insects. We think all insects probably started with mandibles and they started as chewing insects and evolved later into other forms of eating. Next, as we talked about, let's move on to our butterflies and our moths. Our butterflies have a proboscis, so a straw is the best way to demonstrate that. They'll take a flower and they'll use our, their straw to suck it up. They'll go, and that's moths and butterflies. There is something called orchid pest moths that do actually stab into fruit, and they're known for sucking the juices out of there, but most insects, butterflies and moths, use proboscis and they siphon. Now we move on to our piercing, which is a modified proboscis. And so we know those as moths or mosquitoes, or like I said, specific moths, or assassin bee bugs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some scissors and we're actually gonna cut our straw to make a point. So this is our modified proboscis now. It's very similar to the way a needle works. And we're gonna take a victim. We're gonna choose this little llama and we're the mosquito coming right in and we're gonna stab. And we're gonna go And we've drank its blood. Now, not all piercing insects drink blood. Aphids drink leaf juice, but they're pests nonetheless. So, as we move on, we're gonna move on to our sponging insects. So, the most common form of this is the housefly and they use what is called a labellum. For this experiment, we're going to use baking soda, lemon juice, and a sponge. I'm gonna move our poor llamas out of the way, the one with a little bit less blood than the others. And we're gonna put our baking soda onto a plate. I already have a little bit in there. I'm gonna put a little bit more. And houseflies are the best example of having labellums. They cannot chew, so what they do is they actually throw up their stomach acid, and that's going to be our lemon juice, onto their food, which is our baking soda. And they take their labellums, or their sponges, to suck it up. So we're gonna take our lemon juice, and we're gonna pour it right on. And we're gonna get some foaming, you know. And then, now that that's digested outside of the body, we're gonna take our labellum, and we're gonna suck it up. And you see, we're sucking up some liquid and that is what that fly is eating. And you guys are more than welcome to test this out with all kinds of different things. See if you see the pros and cons of each kind. Do you think mandibles are more useful or do you think proboscises are more useful? Or do you think labellums are the best way to go about this? Thank you for joining us today on Colliding at Home. This was Jay. See you next time.